Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you an example of using CSS in your projects. I have here a form that I'm working on as part of a truck scheduling app. This form is for capturing the scale weights as a truck comes in, uh, gets loaded up with product, and then leaves. And so I created four different pages for this form because I didn't want to have a whole bunch of fields on one single page. And when I click the next button, you'll see these nodes, the, the line and the node updates its color. So you know that you've progress that you've progressed in the form, right? And then the new page came in from the right and out the left. You can see it again. It's just swinging in and then swinging out. And if I go back, it works in reverse. And so this is actually a really easy a uh, way of using CSS. You don't have to know much CSS at all to do this. And I like doing this. Uh, I like using CSS for this instead of using a view canvas. That'd be another way of getting the same effect. You could uh, create separate views for each of these pages and then embed them in a view canvas, right? I like doing this because then you have control over how you're configuring each of these pages from the same view. You don't have to open a separate view, make changes, and then go back to this main view to see how the changes affected things. All right, so the first thing to look at is this coordinate container, and it has an overflow set to hidden. Then inside of that coordinate container, I have each of my pages, and these all have a custom property called step, which numbers them one through four. And then the positioning on each of these pages uh, needs to have X set to auto. My Y is zero and my width and height are both 100%. Now on the view itself, I have a step property under custom. Now this is the driving property of the form. What I mean is when I hit next, this step increases. And then when I hit back, that step decreases. And each of these pages have a binding on this style class that looks at the step property on the view. And it compares it with the step property on the page. And if they're equal, it'll give it this style class, progress page current. Otherwise, it's gonna check again to see if the view custom step is greater than this page's custom step. And if that's the case, it'll get this class progress page past. Otherwise, it'll get progress page future. So let's see, let, let me just, I'm on page three. If I click next, you'll see this progress page future become current, become past. And that, uh, that updating of this class is what's triggering the transition. So let's take a look at the CSS. Now I have three groupings of style classes here in my CSS. By the way, if you don't already know, you can enable this CSS style sheet by right clicking on your styles folder. And there should be, if you haven't already enabled it, an option to do so. Also, if you haven't worked with this before, any custom properties that you create in the style sheet when you re refer to them, you'll need to prefix them with PSC dash, all right? So I have three states, past, current, and future. And I have a node, a line, and a page. So those are the components that I'm styling in the three different states. Let's just take a look at the page uh, style classes. All right, so I have a transition, a position, and a property called write on each of these page style classes. The transition and the position are the same on all of them. Transition is uh, affecting all properties over to uh, 0.2 seconds, and it's going to ease in and out, and position is relative. But on this property right, um, for future, right, for the future class, right is set to negative 100. For the current class, right is set to zero. And then for the past class, right is set to 100%. 
this is what's moving the page around inside of the coordinate container. When right is zero, it's lining up the edge, that right edge of the page and the view. When it's 100%, it's all the way to the left. And then when it's negative 100%, it's all the way to the right. You can't see it. So once again, this is the effect. It's really that simple. There's not, nothing more to say about it. So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you have any thoughts, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.